we welcome you on this breezy Thursday afternoon. As you can see, the movie wall has arrived. And this is our opening program for its five-day stay here in Makokoda. And the stay brought to Makokoda by the Baldwin Ambets Post 64, the Jackson County Republican Central Committee, the Bellevue American Legion Post, the Jackson County Historical Society, the Makokoda VFW Post 3633, the Makokoda American Legion Post number 75, and the Andrew Ambets Post number 62. Their coordinator was Ron Horan Jr., and they've been uh, meeting quite regularly for the past couple of months in anticipation of this big event for Makokoda and Jackson County this year, the only year that the movie wall will be in the state of Iowa. We thank you for coming here personally, and we also uh, invite uh, the listeners on KMAQ to uh, stay with us for the next uh, half hour, or however it may be, and uh, we have a nice uh, program for you that we hope that you will uh, enjoy. And then we hope that you'll be able to uh, take a look at the wall before you leave. We will begin with the presentation of the colors, and this is going to be done by American Legion Post number 75 here in Makokota, assisted by the Bellevue American Legion Post number 273. The presentation of colors at this time. The national anthem this afternoon will be done by the Bellevue Bells. I'll introduce them individually to you later. The Bellevue Bells to do our national anthem. Please join with us in singing the national anthem. 
have the posting of the unit colors, the veterans organizations present today. The posting of all the unit colors. Today we are honored to have 17 individual veteran organizations here to present their colors. And as they approach, we ask that you pay the proper respect to remain standing, remove any headgear you may have, and uh, Mr. Pent Mr. John Pentlow of the Bellevue Post 273 Sergeant at Arms will be leading them in, in their uh, march forward. So, Mr. Pentlow, please take command. Andrew Ambet, Post 62. <laughs> Baldwin, American Legion, Post 513. Baldwin, Ambet, Post 64. Bellevue, American Legion, Post 273. Cascade, American Legion, Post 528. DeWitt, American Legion, Post 238. Dubuque, American Legion, Post 6. Dyersville, American Legion, Post 137. Farley, American Legion, Post 656. Lost Nation, American Legion, Post 381. Coca to VFW Post 3633. Coca to American Legion Post 677. Or, excuse me, Coca to American Legion Post 75. Miles, American Legion Post 677. Oxford Junction, American Legion, Post 473. Preston, American Legion, Post 602.
Beulah, American Legion, Post 74. And Sprague Mill, American Legion, Post 590. Be seated. I call up now five members of the Girl Scouts here in Makokata, and uh, they will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Five but seven <laughs> ice girls guys. Next, I call upon Pastor Nathan Combs, who is the pastor of Faith Community Church here in Makokata, with the invocation. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, today we are reminded of the memorial stones you commanded Joshua in the Bible to establish, so that in the future when their children would ask them, what do these stones mean, they could tell their children what had happened there. These stones here today are to be memorial to the people of this great country, so that we and our children will never forget the great sacrifice of those who fought and died in the service of their country in the Vietnam War. Lord, today we gather to honor the memory and to mourn those who gave their lives in Vietnam and to express the gratitude and the honor due them for their sacrifice. We also pray for those who returned from the war in Vietnam and were forever marked and changed by what they experienced there. We pray for so many who came home bearing wounds of both body and soul. God, we ask for restoration and healing for them. We pray that you, the God of all comfort, would visit them with your peace and ease the pain and suffering that they have experienced. And finally, Lord, we pray for justice and freedom and peace, not only for our country, but for around the world. And we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Combs. We ask to come to the microphone now, the chairman of the Jackson County Board of Supervisors, Larry Bakus. Thank you, Dennis. It's an honor to be here today, and on behalf of the Jackson County Supervisors, I welcome all of you here. We're here today especially to honor the six Jackson County residents who gave their lives in the Vietnam War on our behalf. We also pay respect and honor over 58,000 men and women from across the nation who gave their all during this conflict. We must never forget their sacrifices made by all of our veterans, whether at war or during peacetime. We thank the Jackson County Wall Committee for bringing the wall to Maquoketa and, J and Jackson County. Through their efforts, the wall is in our county for all to pay homage to those whose names are engraved there. They told me today that I could uh, speak a little bit uh, if I wanted to. They kind of left it up to me. Those of you who know me, uh, usually I'm not afraid of a microphone, but uh, somehow today, the old butterflies got me pretty pretty good here. But uh, I will proceed with something that I found. I went on the internet last night, uh, and actually the night before, my kids gave me a laptop computer for um, Father's Day along with my wife. And, you know, so I went looking Vietnam War, things to say, things to talk about. And I ended up taking the laptop to bed with me last night and, and look at it. There, there's so much stuff that I've learned in the last 48 hours, it's, it's unbelievable. But one thing that I found that I thought was, was appropriate was a, a poem by Cadet Major Kelly Strong, whose father passed away uh, during the Vietnam War. He was killed in action. And I just thought I'd read that poem today. 
freedom isn't free. I watched the flag pass by one day. It fluttered in the breeze. A young Marine saluted it, and then he stood at ease. I looked at him in uniform, so young, so tall, so proud. With hair cut square and eyes alert, he'd stand out in any crowd. I thought how many men like him had fallen through the years, how many died on foreign soil, how many mothers' tears, how many pilots' planes shot down, how many died at sea, how many foxholes were soldiers' graves, no freedom isn't free. I heard the sound of taps one night when everything was still. I listened to the bugler play and felt a sudden chill. I wondered just how many times that taps had meant amen when a flag had draped a coffin of a brother or a friend. I thought of all the children, of the mothers and the wives, of fathers, sons, and husbands with interrupted lives. I thought about a graveyard at the bottom of the sea, of unmarked graves in Arlington. No freedom isn't free. At this time, I know there's a lot of veterans here. There's some Vietnam vets. I, I would like the Vietnam vets in particular to stand up at this time, those that are here. What I'd like to say to you Vietnam vets is, um, and I think everybody here knows this, when you returned home from service, you weren't welcome to Heroes Welcome. I shouldn't say all of maybe some of were, but from what I remember as a kid and talking to uh, soldiers that I've talked to that came back from Vietnam, uh, I, one particular soldier from Jackson County, didn't want me to use his name, said he got spat on in Chicago. That's not right. So for this, we say thank you again today. And let it be an example that we never, ever let a soldier return home from war and not get the welcome that he deserves. Again, thank you. Again, the Board of Supervisors thanks all of you for being here today at this important opening ceremony. We invite you to return on Monday the 27th for the closing ceremony at 3 p.m. Always keep our veterans and military personnel in your prayers and hearts. And thank you, and at this time I'll turn it over to Dennis. Thank you very much, Board of Supervisor Chairman Larry Bakus. <coughs> Gentlemen, we're calling back to the microphone. has been very active in the Legion over many, many years. Past commander of the Bellevue Post and has been working uh, uh, quite a lot uh, getting ready for this day today. And he is going to introduce our guest speaker today. I'd like to introduce you to Leonard Ernst, who is uh, the uh, past commander of Post 273 in Bellevue and is right now the uh, American Legion 2nd District Vice Commander. He's the Vice Commander of the 2nd District. Leonard Ernst. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. What I'd like to do first is introduce some very distinguished guests, and I'd ask them to please stand as I call their name, and please hold the applause until they have all stood. Uh, today it's my pleasure uh, to introduce these guests, and the first one being American Legion Department of Iowa Commander, Mr. Jerry Sieben, and his wife, Mary. Please stand. Next is American Legion, Department of Iowa Vice Commander, Mr. Al Johnston and his wife, Elizabeth. And we have American Legion, 2nd District Commander, Mr. Cecil Oldridge and his wife, Evelyn. And finally, we have my wife, Marge, who is the incoming president of the Bellevue American Legion Auxiliary Unit 273. Now it is my distinct pleasure to present to you our keynote speaker, Commander Mr. Jerry Sieben. Mr. Sieben lives in Granger, Iowa, about 20 minutes, 20 miles northwest of Des Moines. He is an Air Force Vietnam veteran and has held numerous offices on the post, district, and department levels. He has also served on the national level on the Americanism Council. He is very active in his community. He and his wife Mary have two grown sons. 
It is my pleasure now to present to you Department of Iowa Commander Mr. Jerry Stevens. Good afternoon. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, fellow veterans, and especially today, veterans of the Vietnam War, for inviting me, a fellow Vietnam veteran, to come here today and speak with you about a subject that is close to my heart. It is a tremendous honor for me to stand before you as we welcome, as we come together to remember our fallen comrades. More than 58,000 names of men and women are inscribed on this wall, on this, the greatest of walls. They are either killed or missing in action. These men and women represent the very best America had to offer. The Vietnam veterans represented on this wall and those at this ceremony chose to serve and answer the call of duty, honor, and country. These were hard choices during the 1960s and 70s for our men and women. They chose to serve their country when called rather than opt for the many alternatives that were available. Vietnam veterans coming home ask nothing in return except for the respect of their countrymen. The arrival of this wall provides an opportunity for us to reflect on this important period in our lives. This memorial is for those who dedicated their lives to the call of duty and to some the ultimate sacrifice in Southeast Asia. This is a time for us to come full circle, seek a healing of the wounds and heartache caused by an unpopular war. There were good times and there was bad times. All of them will be remembered. But we must also remember that the Vietnam War is not our life, but an important chapter in our life. Today we take time to remember and honor the ultimate sacrifices made by these brave men and women. America's involvement in the Vietnam War lasted for 13 years, from 1960 to 1973. We didn't return home to parades or kisses in Times Square. Most of us were passengers on board chartered airliners. Others came home on an Air Force cargo plane and dumped air unceremoniously at some military base many times in the middle of night. We were told to quickly get out of our uniforms in order to avoid confrontations. No wonder it has taken so long for many of us to talk about the war. But talk we must, for we are living witnesses and if we are silent, others will continue to spin a version of the truth that best suits their personal or political agenda. We must dispel the myths that have been created about the war, and there are many. But I would rather talk about the facts. I would like to share some of those with you today. 91% of Vietnam veterans say they are glad they served. 74% said they would serve again, even knowing the results. Five Americans killed in Vietnam were 16 years old. The oldest American killed in Vietnam was 63 years old. One out of 10 Americans who served in Vietnam was a casualty. 75,000 Vietnam veterans are severely disabled. The American military did not lose one major battle during our involvement, including Tet, 1968, which was a major defeat for the VC and the NVA. I would also like to remind you 
of some of the humor which had accompanied American soldiers in this war as it has in all wars. I'm certain many of you will remember them. Don't look conspicuous. It draws fire. If it's stupid but works, it's not stupid. If your attack is going really well, it's an ambush. When you have secured an area, don't forget to tell the enemy. Friendly fire isn't. Anything you can do, anything that you do can get you shot, including nothing. Never share a foxhole with someone braver than you are. The buddy system is key to your survival. It gives the enemy someone else to shoot at. And the one I really like is we all remember. It's not the one with your name on it you need to worry about. It's the one addressed to whom it may concern. Even more facts. Three million men and women served in Vietnam. Two-thirds of them that served were volunteers, and 70% that died were also volunteers. If someone tries to convince you that Vietnam was a dirty little war where Air Force and Navy bombers did all the work, you might remind them that was, this was the most costliest war the U.S. Marines ever fought. Five times as many dead as World War I. Three times as many dead as Korea. And more total killed and wounded than in all of World War II. Semper Fi. The wall is a cross-section of our young men and women of America. The youngest is to believe to be 15-year-old Dan Bullock. The oldest, Dwayne McGriff was 63 years old. More than 17,000 of those killed were married. There are 16 chaplains on the wall, two of those receiving the Medal of Honor. There are 153 Medal of Honor recipients. There are three sets of father and son. There are also eight women on the wall. When a young person joins the military, he writes a blank check to our government. Many times the check is cashed as it was for the 58,272 on the wall. They were our buddies, our friends, our teammates. We were closer to them than money than many of our own family members. To quote William Shakespeare, but we shall be remembered, we few, we happy few, we band of brothers, for he today that shed his blood with me shall be my brother. But before I close, I must talk about another set of veterans. The veterans today that are serving in Afghanistan. As you may know, 2,800 of them are serving proudly and gallantly in Afghanistan today. We must never, ever forget them. And when those 2,800 deployed last July, they left a family, the family of Iowans and over 10,000 children. They are truly heroes, but they also are another group of heroes that we should never, ever forget, and that is the spouses and the family members that are left behind. I sometimes think that that is the hardest job that a person in the military that is a spouse has to endure. 
in the last 10 to 11 months, how many times have they had to answer? Mommy, Daddy, when are they coming home? So please tonight, keep them in your prayers. Then in a few weeks, they will all come safely. Because since February, we have lost five of those brave Iowans. To the Vietnam veterans here today, and to all those whose names appear on the wall, I say, you are all heroes. You faced the issues of this war and served with distinction and honor. God bless each of you, and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you very much, our guest speaker, Jerry Seaman, commander of the Iowa Department of the American Legion. Next up, we have uh, a medley of service songs. And this is by the Bellevue Bells. And this trio consists of uh, Mary Reed, Vivian Pitlow, and Laura Horst. As we sing this medley, we'd ask you to stand as we sing the anthem for your particular branch of service. Away, my 
Bellevue Bells will be back. Next up, we have the reading of Jackson County and area names of those deceased that served. And uh, to do this reading will be the commander of the Makokata VFW, O'Connor Regan post number 3833, Commander Tom Waters. Spec 4, Ronald Marvin Beak. Spec 5, Larry John Buddy. PFC, Jerry Lee Collister. Sergeant, Gerald Stephen Politka. Staff Sergeant, Ronald Ray Sagers. Corporal, Ronald Marvin Stein. The presentation of the wreaths will now follow. This will be done by American Legion, Ambets and VFW Post, who are represented here this afternoon. The presentation of Reese. Now the American Legion post number 273 of Bellevue with a 21-gun salute. Bellevue Bells return to the microphone and they're singing of God Bless the USA. And I'm proud to be an American. God bless the USA. God bless the USA. If 
Proceed now with the retrieving of the colors. We thank all who participated today, our guest speakers. We thank the many service organizations who were here today to participate in the program. We thank you for coming. Thank you for listening on the radio. And uh, now we hope maybe you'll have a chance to visit the wall. If not now, sometime in the next five days. I'm Dennis Foy. Have a pleasant evening, everybody.